you're streaming away with our guests. We've only got one camera on the go this week because uh, we call him a cameraman. Our uh, camera screen streaming assistant, Shane, is uh, stuck up in Leeds. He's had to start there for an extra day. But uh, hopefully it's all working. So, uh, Pembroke, uh, how was your journey over? I was pretty good, man. A bit dark. I'll never get used to that. Well, you're not. Oh, no. <laughs> what to the... Uh, the, the changing hours. I wasn't born here. Um, yeah, I was born in California, so this is all a bit strange to me. Although I've been here for longer than I was ever there. I just can't adjust. Yes, you just can't adjust. So, anyway, I survived. So that's a, all that's is a well. Thing. So, yeah, because I suppose in California, <laughs> do you have any seasons at all? Does it get slightly uh, cooler? It gets, the... Yeah, it gets, gets a little chillier, I guess. Uh, you get the, the rainy season and the dry season, mainly, yeah. and the hours don't really change too much. Right. Yeah. You don't get any like changing leaves. You don't really get any snow. Not where I used to live, anyway. Oh no, you do. Get, what about the mountains up in the mountains? Oh you, yeah, you yeah. Go, it's strange. Tons people, of snow. People do. Snow. People do go skiing in, in California, yeah. don't they? Yeah. And, and stuff like that. Well, was the nice thing about it was that you had a beach, you know, a few minutes away, and then if you're willing to drive for a few hours, you can go visit. What's it called? Mammoth Mountain. Hmm. So, you was born in the states. Is that? What you, uh, yeah. You was born in the states, but your parents are from the UK. Yep. And yep. then you've, you've come back to the UK. So how old was you when you came back to the UK? Uh, I was 12. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm 27 now. So I've kind you've of... You've been here for 15 years then. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. I've been here longer than I was ever there. But um, oh, and, can't uh, help uh, when, when, when you was 12, what did you think of the decision to move back to the UK? <laughs> uh, Tell the truth. Uh, look, look I'd, I'd, been on, I'd been on holiday to the UK before because I have family here. Yeah. So um, it kind of felt like a big holiday. At first, yeah. and then gradually it kind of sinks in. Like, oh, I'm I'm here forever. But, but now you're an adult. <laughs> now you're an adult. You decided to stay in the UK and not move back to yeah. the states. Well, you know, I mean, just just look at the election this season. Like, America, <laughs> America is frequently crazy. Um, yeah. Plus, well, you know, I've, 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 I've made I've made you know yeah. so many friends here and a life yeah. and everything. Plus, so. if I was American, I might go back just for the entertainment from Mr. Trump. You know? Yeah, it is it is good it's, value. It's better than a comedy show, really. Yeah, exactly. How are you supposed to like? I was talking about this with my parents over dinner. How are you supposed to do like satire of politics? It's so completely the guy satire, crazy. Satire in himself. As along, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's putting people out of jobs. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's too ridiculous. What's the first number you're going to do? Well, uh, so you um, you had me on the show a couple of weeks back, um, and uh, I did some original tunes. I'm going to do some more originals tonight, Excellent. but I'm going to start with, original tunes. with with one of my favorite covers, which is a a, um, a blues song by Fleetwood Mac from their early bluesy phase. Let's see if I can spot it then. It's called World Keep On Turning. Oh, I do know this one. This is a class one. I don't look for no worries. Worries and troubles, they come around. I don't look for no worries, people. Worries and troubles, they come around. Yeah, the world keep on turning. I got to keep my feet on the ground. Nobody saw me crying. Nobody knows the way I feel now Nobody saw me crying Nobody knows the way I feel mm. Well, the way I love that woman It's bound to get me killed Well, I love that little girl so good She made my low down butter come I love that little girl so good She 
Made my law down, but I come. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Well, I need a love so bad. I need a like the sky needs the sun. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I can't remember which album it's from. Mm. They sort of lined up where that's the first time that uh, Lindsay Buckingham and uh, uh, Chris, Stevie Nicks, Christine McVie, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I have the, it's a Peter Green song, so I'm not quite sure of the, of the timeline, but um, it might have been, might have even been before that. Yeah, I love their early stuff. I do. I do a few early ones, but then I've, I've got another. I've got a couple of tracks from Rumors as well that I do. Um, are, you, are you a big Fleetwood Mac song fan? Oh yeah. Well, the um, you know, I mean, the amazing thing about them is that they've been good for, you know, like forty years, and they've they've changed so many um, members of the lineup as well because they started off as like a, a blues trio, I think, yeah. with with Peter Green, who's a fantastic guitarist, great songwriter, great great singer, but really bluesy, and then they had. John McVie on was he bass? Yeah. yeah. And Mick 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 Fleetwood was on drums and that's how they got the name was McVie and Fleetwood. And then they stuck around and then all the rest of the personnel changed and they brought in Buckingham, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks and yeah. Christy McVie. Yeah, well, Christy McVie obviously married to the bass player. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, and who who is Stevie Nicks married to? She was married to Lindsay Buckingham? Or oh, they were going out. Well, they were going out. Yeah. yeah. I think they, I think they all broke up and then they did rumors, which is yeah, just phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that they could do that, though. That they could they could break up, have all this personal tension, and still work as a band and not just go their separate ways. I she did she did landslide and did she do songbird as well? Yeah, she did, yeah. I really like those two. She's a good songwriter. Yeah. I I think I might I think Stevie Nicks' voice has the edge for me, but maybe I prefer Christine McVie's songs. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Perhaps Christine McVie is better all round eyes, whereas uh, Stevie uh, Nicks is probably the better. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna come down on one side of the fence here. <laughs> but you make a persuasive argument. Uh, my mum has always, um, for as long as I can remember, she's been singing in choirs of all different kinds. So at the, at the moment, um, well, uh, when I was a kid, she was she was doing choral choral societies and things like that. She's always been more into classical music than kind of um, pop or modern rock and that kind of thing. I mean, what she was when she was younger, but um, yeah, she's always done that. And recently, she's actually been involved with um, helping to run Peterborough um, Community Opera. Um, I think that's the name, Peter, Peterborough Opera. Anyway, it's yeah. it's am, amateur thing. Um, yeah, and she's always sung. And my mum, sorry, my dad's mother played piano, but my dad never really got into playing an instrument. But he's really into music, right. so, so we, it seems so to have skipped a generation. And, and, was a lot of music playing in the background. When yeah, 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 exactly. Exa all the stuff that I love was just music that was in the background playing when I was growing up. Um, and I'm still kind of stuck in that in that era. You sort of stuck in that sort of uh, yeah um, mid sort of seventies. <laughs> A yeah, classic rock band sound, bluesy sound. Definitely, like definitely. So, yeah. What about the Eagles and, and people like that? Eagles, I like the Eagles, but um, my the first band that I I really fell in love with was Led Zeppelin. Oh, excellent. And um, the Beach Boys. Uh, and then uh, you know I've I've been through all kinds of different different people, and uh, you know I must I must stress as well, it's not just that. Like, there's a lot of modern stuff I like. Course, yeah. I love a lot of hip hop, but it doesn't really come out in my music because it's 
it's mm. me and a guitar. <laughs> I can't, plus, I can't really rap. For, for argument's sake, if you've got a, a Sunday afternoon chilling and stuff like that, you know, and you've had a couple of beers and you lie down yeah. on the couch uh, and it's time for a classic, what would you stick on? <sighs> I don't know. That sounds like it might be time for A Tribe Called Quest, the low-end theory. That whole album is just so chilled out. Okay, but if you want if you want classic rock, classic rock. Um, Rubber Soul, maybe? Good album by the Beatles, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm on a serious Beatles yeah. kick at the moment. I, I, I had a I had a Beatles sort of kick when I was a young, younger man, sort of like probably like the 15, 16 and sort of yeah. You know, I can remember one of my neighbours was really into Beatles, and in them days you had to uh, I had to nip around his house and uh, you know put a cassette into his house <laughs> actually and, r- and, and record the, his vinyl yeah. and then. Then put then, then put it onto a cassette player sort of thing, and I, th- I think sort of Sony Walkman. Yeah, yeah. No, my, my dad did a similar thing with his whole record collection. It got it got transmitted to to the PC now. Snaps and cracks and popples and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Trans- <laughs> well, it's well, man, that's weird, isn't it? Because I mean, that's how people started off recording stuff onto tape, and then uh, you know CDs come along, and and now yeah, well, yeah, yeah I'm just I'm a different online. different generation. You know, yeah, I, I try and sell C- CDs at gigs, and people are like, well, I haven't got a CD player, oh. so where can I download it? Yeah. And then people are just streaming it now, so not even op- owning any sort of music <laughs> yeah. at all. It's just like, oh, I'll subscribe to a streaming service and away we go. But anyway, yeah. we digress. What's the next song you're going to play? The next song is uh, the first track from my new EP. Excellent. Uh, which The EP is called Gravity, um, which is the name of the last song, but it's kind of complicated, so I'm not going to do it. I'll do the first one instead. And this one is, is about relationships with lots of ups and downs, and it's called Bipolar Love. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four. You can be as soft as honey and you can be as hard as a nail. Gentle summer rain and then you blow me out with a gale. Keep a level head, I'm trying to be good, don't you see? And I hate to admit, but I think you're damaging me Mm. Well, the sweetness of your smile and the bitter of a casual frown your joy takes me up and your misery brings me down Manic depression, it's your psychology And I hate to admit But I think you're damaging me And I'll break down Break down Break down Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. I feel. Well, I got up this morning, saw the sunshine, and I felt a glow. Then I read your latest message, and my high dropped straight to a low. Oh, it must be infectious, despite polarity. Oh, I hate to admit, but I know you're damaging me. And I'll break down, break down, break down. Caught me out Ooh. there with that dead stop. Tell us about the uh, the songwriting process. So, what do you do first? Does the, the does... songwriting process? Well, there's something I'm wrestling with at the moment. Um, Is it? God, uh, yeah. Oh, well, I've 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 been writing um, I've had about four songs on the go for the last week, um, and they've all kind of come spilling out at once. But I can't finish them. Um, 
And uh, yeah, I, I wish I understood the songwriting process kind of more than I do. <laughs> it's quite a tricky you have a, question. You sort of knitted, you know, two songs together, sort of. You know, so you've got two songs, and you think, oh, yeah, I'll finish it off, and well, then you sort of, oh, hang on a minute, that bit will fit with that bit. And yeah, so I haven't quite, songs. I haven't quite had two songs that I fit together because to have two songs to fit together. It, that sounds kind of like you have two finished things that you then put yeah. together. I don't really, yeah. but I've got loads and loads of ideas kind of floating around um, that usually just don't get finished, but um, sometimes they get stitched together into sort of zombie patchwork. I don't do, know. Are you a pr pretty prolific sort songwriter? Of, uh, not as much as I'd like to be, because it has been, basically I've heard that um, the best way to get really good is to write just loads and loads and loads. And the important thing is not to worry too much about quality, but oh. to, to focus on quantity. And then quality comes through having just done lots of it. But you said you had four on the go. So how long, these sort of four that came to you, how long they sort of been in your head? They've been in your head a week, a month? Or? Um, some of them have been in there for a week. One of them's been in there for a couple of days. Another one's been in there for like six months. Oh. So yeah, it's just really varied. It's a totally mixed bag. I, I wish I understood it better, but... And, I don't know, it's just fun anyway. Sort of, <laughs> does the melody pop into your head and you play it on the guitar first, or do you just get a... Is that the way it goes for you, or do you um, get the lyrics first? Or sometimes, some, sometimes like, I get lyrics, and sometimes lyrics are really easy to write to, and a tune just arrives, and the song... Oh, you can be, you can finish, the best songs that, that I've done, in my opinion, took generally between 20 minutes and a half an hour. And then the ones that are kind of all right tend to be like a bit more laborious and might take, you know, a year <laughs> yeah. um, or a month. Mm. Uh, but definitely when inspiration strikes, you kind of need to jump on it, make the most of it. You've got, you've got, have you got a notepad by the bed just in case? Exactly. Yeah. I've got a notepad by the bed. I've got one in my gig bag. I've got one in my jacket pocket. Uh, I use my phone as well. So voice there's like a, a, exactly yeah. voice memos on the phone. Um, so you hum little snatches of, of song in there where you, you play something out on, on guitar. Because I always have a guitar nearby as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, just kind of put them down anywhere you can find them. And then hope you don't forget where you put them. Because then you have to, like, <laughs> take them from... Yeah. What about when you're driving? Because, I mean, sometimes driving can be sort of quite <laughs> good for that. Because you, if you're not listening to anything on the that radio funny, or something like that, that you and you're sort that. of on semi-autopilot, your, your, bri your brain... <clears throat> that's a strange thing to say, but you... You know, your brain sort of drifts yeah, you, off a you, little yeah, bit. Yeah, well, I've heard, I've it. heard like going back to the Beatles. I've heard like Paul McCartney used to drive around to um, John Lennon's house, and he would be thinking about you know songs and songwriting on the way, um, and then he would kind of arrive with like a kind of half finished idea, and then they'd they'd work on it together. But yeah, it's funny that you mention all that because I was literally it just you know driving here, um, working on something in the car. So is this something that I'd recorded into my phone? I play over the car stereo, and then I'm trying to work out, you know, new new pieces, new new lyrics, a new idea that might help, um, kind of like bind the whole thing together. That's the one trick I find is like if you can, f if you can, put your your finger on one central idea for the song, then the rest of it can kind of flow out of that. Mm. You've got like a lyrical idea, and then you have it, if it evokes like a feeling, then you can express that feeling through the music and it's easier to find music to express that feeling if you know what it is you said you had we were chatting earlier and you said you, you could play for over two hours or so so is that two hours of your own material or is it was that a mixture oh, of uh, material and big, yeah it's a mix um yeah in order to because because I, I i play music full time um in order to pay the bills i do uh a lot of pub gigs yeah. and private parties and weddings and that kind of thing in addition to to you know um public stuff uh in in bars and clubs so um yeah i'd say i've probably got at least an hour and a half of originals and i've got about three hours of covers Excellent. so so when you're doing these private parties then sort of what do is it covers or do you manage to sneak in a few originals? oh yeah I always wait, wait, till all, <laughs> wait till the end of the wedding evening or something and then sneak out a load of originals because everybody's had yeah. so many drinks they don't, they're not really yeah ex exactly when you're like yeah two-thirds three-quarters of the way through the night people people kind of get you by that point they're a bit drunk they're having a good time um then then yeah you, you sneak one or two in especially if you're doing like a series of up-tempo numbers um, you, I, I can slip in like an up-tempo song Which, on my It own. must be a nice way to make a living, though, if, if you can actually get by on the uh, music. It's, it must be a bit of a dream, in a way. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was... that was. I, I, I'm just... I'm, I'm getting by um, with the help of my, my parents, because I live with them. Mm. So I'm in, I'm in their spare room. But um, everything else, you know, I can afford myself. Um, 
But yeah, yeah, it's absolutely I mean, not people. I, I, I had, I had a, nowadays live with their parents, so, you know. So yeah, it's, it's not unusual at all. Not unusual at all, you know. Um, cost of housing and stuff like that. Yeah, no, it is. It's, it's through the roof. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, I was a copywriter in a marketing agency, and it really didn't agree with me. I just didn't like it at all. Not copywriting. That's fine. Well, but just I think just, just marketing. Yeah, and so yeah, exactly. Sitting at a desk as well, I, I didn't enjoy it. You know, like eight hours a day, five days a week. Ugh. Time just goes by. It's like being exactly. Back at school, you sort of sit there and you look at the clock and you think, well, you don't look at the clock, and then you think, oh, I will check the time. Yeah. And you look at and you're like, you started at like nine in the morning, and you think you've been there two and a half hours, and then you look, it's like quarter to ten. <laughs> That's exactly the feeling that I was running away from. Like, oh, what am I yeah. doing with my life? I've been there and done that somewhere along the line. After doing yeah. a totally different job and then well, be, being desk desk bound and i've never been desk bound before and i thought like, i just can't believe it it's worse than being at school you know? <laughs> i suppose it's all right if you want time to go slowly and you don't want to age in any way or shape or yeah. get a desk job but apart from that you know well like, well oh listen, my god doc is behind a desk right now yeah different sort of desk though this, <laughs> but it's, it's like an entertaining desk yeah it's a um, bit like starship with, enterprise in yeah, a way i've always thought of fancy sort of fancied having a studio you know like this because we've even got sort of like a viewing screen here you know what i mean if you cut a hole out at a window <laughs> and had a projector up there we could nearly pretend well you know we could yeah. nearly pretend we was uh, it's the right shape and everything yeah it is this bit is, isn't it? you know it is really so yeah could, and uh, I mean, we've got our phones yeah. which are like our communicators that mr kurt used to have which are probably we about, are living in the future yeah it so, is so, it is ridiculous you know so the, our phones are very similar to our com his communicators in a yeah way, so. but can can we just like I want a machine where I can just put a cup in it and it just... Oh, a replicator. Just, just, just replicate me some, yeah. some chicken soup yeah. and a cup of tea. That would put the brewery out of work, right? Mm, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all the beer would taste the same, wouldn't it? How, how are you going to replicate like a, a, well, special, I don't know. Like a, I don't a craft know. brew? So, no, if I had a machine, I'd, that wouldn't be good for me if I had a replicator in my yeah. kitchen replicating beer. Or beer. <laughs> then, yeah, that could be the end of me, I think. Yeah, you just, you, as soon as you finished, you just put the empty bottle back underneath. And then, then you, won't, you won't even be able to keep track of how many you've had. No, no, it could be a bit lethal, really. Could, could be a bit lethal in, in quite yeah, a well, few ways, Then really, just but... repli le replicate yourself a new liver. Well, yeah, well, they're into a different uh, stage, <laughs> that's a different thing altogether. You know, pigs are being uh, genetically altered to grow livers and stuff like that. But we diverse. Let's go back to uh, some music. Speaking of, of diverseness, um, uh, I, I quite like writing songs in all kind of different styles. Mm. Um, so this is one. I really like Bob Dylan. We haven't mentioned him yet. No, but, not um, of course. No, the well, Nobel we, we Prize winner. We can talk about Bob. <laughs> Is he collecting that Nobel Prize after all? Uh, I, think he is, I don't he? know. I haven't really, I haven't really been paying that much attention to my. Well, to when, my he, when he when he awarded the uh, Nobel Prize it, to him, he, he they it, put it a little post it, on his website for about thirty minutes. Then he took it down. Then they never heard nothing from him for like two weeks. Never heard nothing <laughs> from him for two weeks. And then I think I read somewhere online that he was was going to collect it or something. Like yeah, that. but they was quite miffed with him. Quite miffed. Yeah. With him. You know, I had an interview with a guy of the, the chair or something like that, and he was he was really put out. And I thought, well, I think, I was, I think he handled it pretty well himself, Bob Dylan. I thought, yeah. that's a way to get a bit of even more publicity out of it, really. Yeah. Anyway, so, but anyway, off you go. What's this song called? This song is called the Fracking Song, and it is about fracking. Excellent. Uh, which, in case you don't know, um, is a way of getting oil and gas out of the ground, and it's just been allowed under national parks in this country, I think. Very controversial. So yeah, here here's, this is me putting on my, doing my best Bob Dylan impression. But this is one of my songs. I'm out here a hundred miles from my home, walking a track. Big oil has gone down. I'm seeing a new world, the industry's backing in a fold of the valley where they've started fracking. Oh, there's derricks and storage tanks, pipe work galore, a festering sore on the valley's floor. But we need energy and other fuels lacking, the government says we've got to get well, there's gas to be found in the Sussex shales 
In Dorset, the Peaks and the Yorkshire Dales Do we really need heather or gorse or bracken? Bulldoze it under and make way for fracking! Oh. Okay, there's a problem with tremors and quakes But getting the energy's worth a few shakes so say the oil men through lips that are smacking Imagining cash they'll be making from fracking Oh! Well, as if this world isn't messed up enough We've gotta go and frack it all up But I went to a meeting of no fracking schemers And they all drove up in Audis and Beamers <laughs> Without a change of lifestyle, what's the good of them yakking? They haven't realized how much they need fracking So are you ready for your homes to be cool? Or the size of your car to be fixed by a rule Till we face this dilemma, there's no point attacking We're all to blame We all need fracking Frack you! Hey! <laughs> oh, thanks. Irony in it mm. at the end of the day. Oh, my son. Yeah, I like a song with a message. Mm. But it's hard not to preach, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there is this plan. There is this plan to have an interconnector between us and Iceland. Uh, it's going to cost a fair amount of money, but I'm not sure any, anybody's ever committed any Connect, money to connector it. Connector what? An interconnector. So, because because the the Icelandic they generate all their uh, energy through thermal. Oh thermal yeah, power, yeah, yeah. And they've got quite run, an excess. Like, they've the, got quite an excess of it. Yeah. And so, they're on about putting a you know, deep sea cable all the way across, and uh, obviously that I think I can't remember where I read about it, but it could supply a fair amount of energy to the UK and cost you know. Yeah. Bit. I think the well, cable would cost seven or eight billion pounds, but it'd be a, a good uh, way. Yeah, I mean, surely that's that's going to average out over. Of course it will. Yeah, it's yeah. better than having a nuclear power station. Yeah, and, and, you know, well that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Well, the, yeah, doing all the generating in in Iceland yeah. just from yeah. underground. I think it's quite a good idea myself. Yeah. yeah, better than fracking. Definitely, definitely. But uh, no, of <laughs> but course, not as hilariously named. So. <laughs> no, well, in Battle, I don't know if you ever watched Battlestar Galactica like this. Uh, yes, yeah. not the original. Not I've the seen original, the, I've seen one, the, yeah, the remake. Yeah, and yeah. Of course, fracking is uh, put in there. Oh yeah, a, yeah. It's actually actually one of the one of the swears. One of the swear sort of, words. Yeah. Of that. So every time I hear that word fracking, always, always <laughs> exactly, always think exactly. Of, uh, I just think of like Gaius Baltar. Yeah, just, just yeah. What a character. Yeah. What a character, Gaius Baltar. Mm. Right, so I can sit there and watch him all day long. You yeah. should, have you ever wrote a song about Gaius Baltar? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's on my to-do list. No, I'll put it, it, I'll put it probably out. probably a good song about him, really. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. A complicated man. Yeah. Back to youth. How old was you when you picked up the, the guitar? Uh, I think I was 17, but I might have just been on the, the sort of trailing edge of 16. Yeah. Um, yeah, just kind of out of the blue, really. Um, yeah, didn't did you spend very much. you buy your own guitar? Or did somebody buy one for you? No, I, I went out and bought my own from a starter pack. It was like an Ashton thing. It was like a really big... Um, dreadnought style guitar. Um, it made quite a nice sound, but the, it played terribly. Um, so that lasted, what, six months maybe? And then um, my godfather, uh, who's a, a friend of my dad's, um, he's played guitar for years and mm -hmm. his, his sound is really good as well. Um, and he's got a big collection. He's quite, a, he's quite well to do. And he has a huge collection of um, amazing vintage guitars where he, he, he picked out a uh, my, my, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a special guitar, but it was a nice one. Yeah. The, the first one that he picked out was a made in Mexico um, Fender Stratocaster, oh, white nice. like Jimi Hendrix's, yeah. and, and the previous owner, because it's second hand, had swapped out some electronics for some nicer ones, so it made a really good noise. And I've still got it, still play it. It's just fixing it up yeah. the other day. Yeah, and, and have you always been a solo artist, or have you been in bands? And, and uh, oh, no, no, no. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> um, 
so I, I picked up guitar at 17 and I could always kind of sing. Um, and I went and did a few open mics near the beginning as well once I'd mastered a couple of songs. But, you know, I've, n I've, I've never been the natural performer. I mean, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm fine with it now because yeah. I've, I've done so much um, that, you know, you, you, you get a lot of practice and eventually become it's second nature. Exactly. And you don't have to think or worry about it anymore. But, um, oh, God, the first few ones that I did were agony. Uh, ner very nervous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, just soaked through with sweat, like shaking hands. Um, could barely hold a note because my voice was shaking so much. How old yeah, would you be then? 17. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. So still maybe quite a young 18. person then, really. Yeah. yeah. And, and not, you know, naturally kind of outgoing in that way. Um, yeah. And then um, joined a band at university, made some really great friends. Uh, so what I sort still... of style band was that? Uh, well, we were called the Black Dogs. Um, so Led Zeppelin fans might know. Yeah. <laughs> Black Dog. Um, yeah. Uh, just blues rock, really. Uh, we wrote some originals, did a few covers as well. Um, played in Battle of the Bands uh, a couple of years in a row, made it to the finals in our oh, last well year. Yeah. 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 Is that we're, a right passage, though, if you're a bit of a musician, when you go to university, you've got to be in a band, anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so glad I did it. It was my favorite part of university, I think. Um, and then when I left um, and, and got a job, I stopped for a little while, a couple of years, and then I, I, I found some friends. I used to live in Leamington. I found some friends um, from, from Leamington and Coventry, and, and we, we played in a band as well. Again, it was, it was kind, of, kind of blues rocky, um, but we did some other stuff as well. That was mainly originals. Um, and then, unfortunately, cause, well, because when I started doing music full time, I, I had to quit my job and moved back in with my folks. I wasn't in the area anymore, so that, that band. Mm. Um, yeah, we stopped doing that. Uh, but I'm getting together a new group locally um, with some amazing guys who I've met in Oakham. They're hugely talented, and we're putting together a, uh, like a covers function band, but we both, well, all four of us do original material too, so that'll probably happen at some point. Uh, um, but yeah, two, they're, two sides, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, what's, what's the music scene like in... Uh, the Oakham is, a, is it it's really, really good. You, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't believe it, but it's it's excellent. Um, if any of you guys are fans of uh, live music and you are free on a Wednesday night, there's a great pub in Oakham called the Three Crowns. It's a Steam and Billy's pub. Um, uh, that's what it says. Everyone calls it Steam and Billy's, but it's oh. like the name of the brewery, though. Isn't awesome. it? Anyway, so it's all real ale and stuff like that in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, they got a nice selection of beers and stuff, but it's just a nice place. It's a really nice good atmosphere. crowd. Yeah, really good. Um, and they do open mics every Wednesday, and they're run by a really nice um, guy called Simon Booth, and um, I've just got loads of friends there. And that's where I met these these other guys, um, and they're yeah phenomenally talented musicians. And there's there's always good vibes and and just fun to be had on Wednesday nights. So yeah, Wednesdays, eight o'clock. Three Crowns, Steam and Billy's, Oakham. Good plug. Good yeah, plug. yeah. What's the next song you're going to do for us? <laughs> the next song, I have not thought that far ahead. Oh, I, saw, I, saw, I, saw, I, amb uh, I ambushed you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do, you, do you want to hear an original? Or should I do oh, no, cover? not sure. Yeah, well, I'd like to hear an original. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, right. Because I always play this one, I'm always ready to play it. So I'll do it this one. It's called, um, it's called Look Out Below. And it is the first song from my first album. Uh, and uh, it goes like this. Got this uh, gentle beauty, got this long flowing hair. Oh, uh, ever since I met her, I've been up in the air. Her smile says, Come on, but she plays it so shy. Oh, uh, ever since I met her, Lord, I've been sky high. Yes, I'm falling, falling, falling A look out below Falling, falling, falling In love, 
look out below Well, she's pretty as a picture of John Millay drawing wood. Ever since I met her, Lord, I've been soaring up in the clouds. I've had blue skies above and the sun on my face. So oh, I've been falling in love. Yeah, down, down I'm falling With a long, long way to go Yes, I'm falling, falling in love Look out below Falling, falling in love Look out below Well, she's not my first love I've been around for too long I know you fall to the ground Look out below Falling, falling, falling Look out below Falling, falling in love Look out below Thanks. So, uh, you were saying earlier you've got uh, an EP out. How can uh, people get hold of it mm. or want to listen to it and stuff like that? Yeah, let's plug my new stuff. Uh, right, so my new EP is called Gravity. My name is Pembroke Tennyson. Um, that is my real name. That's not just some really awkward stage name that I've picked. Uh, last name is like Tennyson the Poet, except it's spelled with an E instead of a Y. Anyway. Um, the EP is on Spotify and uh, Amazon and iTunes and I think Deezer as well and any other place you might care to look on the internet. Um, there's also a promo track up on my YouTube channel. Um, and and you've got a website as well. Yes, yeah, yeah. I got a website. I got a Facebook page. Um, yeah, if, if you guys if you guys are liking this, um, do like up my Facebook page because that's where I post regular updates on the gigs that I'm playing, where I'm at, whether or not I'm on Doc Mason's radio show, that kind of thing. Excellent. Uh, and uh, talking about gigs, have you got any gigs uh, lined up? Uh, people come and see you live in the next uh, few weeks or yeah two? yeah um let's see i'm mainly playing in london during november but if you guys are free on the 11th of december i am playing in charters bar um Excellent. on the oh, that is a it's actually sunday afternoon is it yeah ah, oh yeah i've been down on a sunday afternoon i was down there for three four weeks three four weeks ago on a sunday afternoon oh you must have just missed me because i was there about a month ago doing this the same slot uh, well, well, yeah, Mark, well, well done. There was a band on there the other week I was in there. Yeah. Covers band. Well, they, they did some bad covers. They did, like, Pixies covers and, yeah. know, and stuff like that. Did well, that's, that's kind of, you know, I, I kind of do a mix of mm. uh, of original and, and cover stuff because, you know, hey, it's a public It was public pretty busy people. on a Sunday afternoon. It was. It was, it was like, it was a really good atmosphere. Yeah. I went in, let's see, I started, it's, it's three till five in the afternoon. Yeah. And uh, at three, it was a little bit quiet. But by, like, half past three, it was buzzing. Mm. And, yeah, by the time I left, it was, it was packed out. Um yeah, just really nice vibe. So, people, people were really Sunday, into it. Sunday, 11th of December, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pop in to see uh, Pembroke uh, Tennyson down yeah. at Charles. Nice, nice venue. You can yeah, enjoy, very nice. Uh, 
Okay, uh, some great in- some great entertainment then. Uh, and uh, yeah, good beers. Nice beers. And yeah, if if you <laughs> if you turn up and you don't want to listen to me, you know, there's like a whole outside section, or you go down the other end of the boat, or if you're really into it, there's like seating right in front of the yeah. stage. And the stage is, I mean, it's a boat, so it's not like yeah, the stage <laughs> it's not is like a, small, a big the stage tall is rather stage. small. Yeah, but it's amazing how many people you can squeeze on there. I've seen, you know, I've seen a five piece band squeeze yeah. onto the stage. Well, it's, not, it's not wide, but it's quite long, so yeah. I can imagine them kind of just going further and further back. Yeah. Yeah, the acoustic's shaped. not bad in there, is it? Really? No. Well, it kind of, it, yeah, it's sort of it's just like a giant metal tube. Mm. So it, it kind of keeps the sound fairly focused. Yeah, it's good. Have you, have good you played gig. outside in the summer? Because that's a nice one to do. No, I haven't done that. Summer. I thought they, they might ask me this summer, but it didn't right, happen. Yeah, Maybe next year. So you're, you're sort of playing there regularly then? Uh, yeah, this will be my third gig there. Yeah, um, yeah uh, that's the nice thing. Places do ask me back. That's what you want. That's it's what you a good want. sign. So, yeah. Sunday the 3rd of uh, December. 11th of December. 11th of December, yeah. Well, let me, just, let me just double check that. Otherwise, uh, God, what if, I'm, what if I'm giving people plugging the wrong day? This is the sort of thing I should know off the top of my head. I think I do know it off the top of my head, but I am a just, forgetful man. You're just thinking man. now, oh, I'm, uh, little, little yeah. of doubt has creeped in Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's the 11th. It's the 11th, 3 till 5. Yeah, would love to see you guys there. Excellent. So, what's your, what's your favourite cover? If you if you, had a, fav- if you had a favorite song that you covered, what, what <sighs> song would it be? Um, well, I've already played it. I think "World yeah. Keep On Turning" is just yeah. really yeah. really fun. Um, I don't know. Well, I would like to. I would like cover. to do a, a Bob Dylan song. Oh, okay. now you, that you, I have, you feel free to uh, play whichever you feel, whichever you like. I mean, Bob, Bob Dylan's got a massive. Uh, Back catalogue, hasn't he? And he's got different periods, and he's got absolutely. He's got vast. different styles of uh, playing. And I suppose, in a way, it's a bit like uh, like the Stones, like the Rolling Stones. It depends how old you were at a certain time and when they released the album. Because a lot of people have different favourite Bob Dylan albums, and yeah, it's probably a little bit generational exactly. as well. If, if people say, "Oh, I like Bob Dylan," what you really have to ask is, "Well, which Bob Dylan?" Hmm. Um, he's been through a lot of stages, hasn't he? Yeah, I like the. Um, this is actually a very early song. Yeah. Uh, it's called "Girl from the North Country," um, and it's kind of a little bit adapted from Scarborough Fair, actually, which is a traditional folk song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really like his his early period up until about '67, and after that, you know, I like I like a lot of it. You know, "Desire," mm. "Blood on the Tracks." I, like, I like "Desire." Yeah. I think "Desire" is my favourite Bob Dylan. Oh really? Well, that's only my personal. Well, I like it a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, yeah. I'm 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 an early. And you never had a shot at ISIS then. You know. No. <laughs> How long is that one again? It's, oh, yeah, it's a long song. It's about seven or eight minutes long or something. Yeah, like, like S- Sad Eye Lady of the Lowlands or something. Yeah, but it's a, it's a good song. It's yeah. a good song. Oh, well, yeah, I think everybody has a, a, a favourite Bob Dylan album, don't they? And they yeah. say a lot of people, well, some people don't like him at all. It's, it's quite weird, really. But Yeah, it's it's got to be the voice. It is a voice that I think puts people off sometimes. Mm. You know, I love so, it. You know, yeah, it's, but, it's, like, it's, like, it's like scratching an itch. For me, but if, I mean, it's, if was, it's the scratch if, and the itch. I'm sure someone else has said that about him before, but yeah. That's if perfect. he was just a songwriter and he was he, and he never performed himself, he'd still be a multi-millionaire, wouldn't he? Because yeah. all the songs he's written for people, a multi-multi-millionaire, all the songs he's written that people have covered, yeah, and stuff like that, you know, yeah. And people don't even realise, you know, then you hear a song, they don't even realise it probably is a Bob Dylan exactly. Song. I, 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 on on one of my sort of public profile pages where I, I sort of uh, advertise myself for gigs, um, I've got a list of like all the Bob Dylan songs I play, and I just realised. There's like another two that I haven't listed in that section because I'm doing covers of of covers of, of what, people who have uh, covered like, his song. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm I'm like if I'm covering Hey Joe, I'm covering Jimi Hendrix, but Jimi Hendrix was no wait, no, I'm thinking all along the Watchtower. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I've got confused, yeah. but yeah, he's covering Bob Dylan, and you're and you're covering Jimmy. Yeah, and there we go. And I mean, and, and of course, some of his songs go back. Well, they're just like folk songs that go back a long way, don't yeah. they? Yeah. You know, so, but anyway. With too much chat, not enough music. I am on to Turn up the guitar for this one. If you're traveling in the North Country Fair Where the winds hit heavy on the borderline Remember me to one who lives there She once was a true love of mine If you're going where the snowflakes storm Where rivers freeze 
days and summer ends Please see she wears a coat so warm To keep her from the howling wind Please see if her hair hangs long If it rolls and flows all down her breast Please see for me that her hair's hanging long For that's the way I remember her best Well, I'm wondering, does she remember me at all? Many times I have often prayed In the darkness of my night And in the brightness of my days So if you're traveling in the North Country Fair Where the winds hit heavy on the borderline Ah, oh, remember me to one who lives there She once was a true love of mine Enchanting song. It is a beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah, yeah. Really, really is. What album does that come off? Uh, the Freewheeling Bob Dylan, I think. Not my favourite. <laughs> but obviously, well, I think it's like any artist, like uh, himself, musical genius, like Bowie or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it's hard to go but, wrong, really. Yeah, it's hard to, there's always going to be a little gem somewhere along the line. Not every album was going to be, not every album was going to be full of brilliant songs. Yeah. Not all the time. But even when he meant whichever, you no, know, them sort of musical geniuses like that, they still say, "Oh, it's not a brilliant album, but there is a couple of real stunner yeah. tracks on there somewhere." Yeah, you know and saying? you know, yeah, okay, so they're not all all brilliant albums and they're not all brilliant songs, but you can hear the evolution of mm. of of an artist's uh, creative style. Um, you know, so it's another reason I love the Beatles is because if you, I mean, like, well, I, I happen to think that like Beatles albums are incredibly consistent in just the quality of, of everything that they do. But you, when you go back right to the very beginning, they're writing in, in, you know, Mersey beat style. And it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's very much one style. And then you can hear it evolve through every single album and every, like all the songs are great on every album. But they still sound like the Beatles. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They always sound like them and yet they're changing all the time. And then by the time you get to like the, the sort of mid sixties period and you get into, you know, Sergeant Pepper's of the white album, it's like, wow, how are they doing all of this? I mean, that is always a challenge, isn't it, for an, every band uh, or every artist, really. If, if you if you write an album of any sort and it's a, a hit or a pretty big album or something, yeah. Like what that. what are you going to do? You're going to do the, the same second thing again? The second album is a, <laughs> is a killer. Yeah, you know, so definitely. That, that's the one that uh, kills a, lot, a yeah. lot of people. I think just follow your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I can never say say what. Well, 
just do another version of the first one. You know, what I mean? <laughs> in the first album, you you probably wrote twenty five songs and then cut it down to twelve. Yeah, yeah, or so. yeah. Exactly. So there's probably still another thirteen or so kicking around, or whatever. Yeah. Quite a few kicking around. You just had a few new ones, and away you go. But some some bands do seem to go for a drastic change completely and try to move away. I don't know whether yeah. it's the fact that they've sort of had a hit album, a big album, and then they've been touring it for two or three years, and then, and like, then maybe they're really bored of it. Yeah, yeah they're they really wanna, bored they of it, the sound different. and everything else like that. So right, well. We'll we'll change it completely now. Yeah. We'll do something totally different. Well, it's just another one. It was one of the modern bands that I really like, Radiohead. Um, mm. You know, they did OK Computer, yeah. like a huge smash hit. Um, you know, brilliant album. I still love it to this day. And then they turn around and did Kid A, which is so utterly different and so kind of minimalist. Yeah. After 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 OK Computer it was, uh, yeah, like a huge change. And you would have thought that it, it would have alienated people, but. It was good enough and interesting enough that, that people still although it was a it. giant change. But they must have lost some fangs along the way. Oh, yeah, know. definitely. I mean, my, one of my favourite bands, like the Arctic Monkeys, yeah. really, that first album was such a brilliant classic album, and since then, you just think, some, <laughs> you think, oh, you know, it's not, nothing, uh, they just not hit that peak again somewhere along the line, but they did change their style completely. Yeah, they did. And, and stuff like yeah. that. You know, I think, you know, okay, so it's 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 not going to be good enough, but like you, you have to admire people for taking those Of course, those yeah. Chances. Well, if you don't yeah. experiment and, and change things you know, yeah. around, you're never going to get nowhere. I mean, that's how people who reinvent, like Bob Dylan or David Bowie or somebody like that, yeah. you know, they reinvented themselves all the way yeah. along and had different... So, I mean, he had a period when he played with quite large bands as well, didn't he, Bob Dylan? So he was sort yeah. of, you, you know... He, you know, he was sort of like Bob Dylan and his band in a way. Bowie, there's there's another name I love. Yeah, yeah. and he's another Bowie... great one for for listening to someone evolve as well. Yeah, well, definitely. Do you Especially have, like have you ever have you ever heard the the really really early stuff oh, that really he did, like stuff. the Laughing Gnome. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. guys, if you haven't heard the Laughing Gnome, go out and listen to it. The Laughing Gnome by David Bowie. Yeah, you will. I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but well, no, uh, you'll be astonished, really. Astonished you, is a yeah, good word. Yeah, yeah, you'll be astonished, really. You'll be thinking, "What's he up to?" Yeah, you know, he's he's doing like a uh, what do they call it, like a comedy track in the yeah, or just like this weird novelty yeah, thing. Yeah. But it gives it, it inspires me because it's like, well, he wrote all these frankly terrible <laughs> songs um, and did like four albums before he ever kind of found traction, found success, yeah. and then he, you know, obviously he made it huge. And he's David Bowie. He's he's brilliant, but. Um, you know, you wouldn't have known it. Really. He was still one for a bit of novelty, though, wasn't he? Here and there. You yeah. Know, you know, he was definitely one for a bit of novelty. You know, he's, he's just sort of evolved his characters in a way. Yeah. You know. He found a way to kind of work it into the, the mix and not make effectively. It, and not yeah. make it sort of seem corny. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, he, he got away with it, sort of thing. But he did. Uh, anyway, what's the next song you'd like to do? Is it an original? Uh, <laughs> um, I would you like on the to spot do... too often. Yeah, well, you see, I want to play songs from this this new EP, but Ooh, um, go for it. there's only kind of three of them that are really appropriate. I mean, there's three. Oh, I see you're struggling so. with the words, huh? The words? Oh, oh no, uh, no, the, I didn't mean that. Yeah. I meant um, in terms of kind of arrangement, because although I'm playing these songs just just me and a guitar mm. um, on the album, there's there's a, a much more kind of lush arrangement. It's just really a band arrangement. So there's just drums and there's bass yeah. and there's keys so and there's multi So did you bring people in to help you out then? Uh, no, actually, we did everything in the studio. Um, well, so, so you can play the drums yourself, can you? <laughs> no. Oh. Um, the uh, producer uh, is a drummer, Excellent. so he took care of that. What, what and, I did, and he played a bit of keys, and I yeah. did all the rest of it. So all the all the guitar, um, all the singing, all the harmonies. That's all me. What about you to record it? What studio was the name? Of the uh, studio? It's Animal Farm in London, um, in ba 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 Bermondsey, I think. It's in a place called the Old Biscuit Factory, which is this really charming old kind of warehouse that's been divvied up into different offices. I mean, recording um, in London is quite expensive, so you've invested quite a bit of time. I did, into it. I did, yeah, and um, yeah, I, I think I think you know the results sound sound really um, polished. And how long how long a period did you do it? Did you just do it over a weekend, or was it a couple of it weekends? It was. Uh, we spent five days, and yeah. we got five tracks, which is pretty good going. Yeah, well, that's quite good, isn't it? Really, yeah. yeah. Um, especially because I'm I'm happy with the standard of it, you know. I don't feel like we dropped the ball anywhere and had to like rush to like paper over some mistakes mm. or anything. Mm. Um, you have to yeah. send a track into us then. We can fly yeah, um, I wanted to. Did, uh, I'm actually I'm uh, ordering CDs Excellent. Uh, tomorrow, and um, I'll bring you guys a, a physical thing. Oh, um, and I'll definitely send you links, yeah. of course. Thank you very much. Right, so this is track number uh, two, I think. <laughs> it's called "Watch Your Man." And it's uh, a word of warning. I know that 
this will sound like I'm the love police But your man has been around and I've gotta speak my piece He's got a chain of hearts five miles long And every link is for someone he's loved and wronged mm. You better watch your man You better watch your man well, have you checked his phone? Who knows what you'll find there? He hates to be alone and he loves to share Share his love around, yes, what could be kinder Than always swiping right on Tinder and Grinder? <laughs> you better watch your man You better watch your man, that's what I'm telling you You better watch your man You better watch your man Well, or maybe his cheating was fleeting Maybe those days were a phase But once bitten, twice shy, take it on the chin now nah, He's a cheating guy, keep one eye on him <laughs> Well, uh, I don't deny that he could change his ways uh, That he could do right and end this cheating phase uh, Leaving his love aside, he's really quite a guy But there's twice the danger from strangers, did you know? The boy is by, he's a charming devil Gotta keep him on the level, that's why You better watch your man You better watch your man, don't rely on him you better watch your man, keep an eye on him You better watch your man Thanks. A great song. A great song. <laughs> so you're busy songwriting, you're busy performing, and you're uh, is, is your aim to make a living out of it all the time? You know. Yeah. Well. Yeah. That's um. That's. I mean. You know. The dream is. You know. Of course. Strike, yeah, to strike make it, it. Strike it big. Yeah. Um. Be be Bob Dylan, uh, and um, Paul McCartney and John Lennon and. Did I read somewhere? Jimi Hendrix wanna, all at once. You know. And you won a, a competition somewhere along the line somewhere a competition uh, I was a BBC introducing artists of the month in Excellent. Coventry and Warwickshire which is where I used to live mm. so when I first started penning my own stuff um, well I first started writing in, in university but uh, then after I left um, I did some things while I was working at my job um, oh and that's one of the nice things about being a copywriter in a marketing agency is that um, you obviously you had just have like text on your screen all the time so you know, <laughs> no one's going to notice if you're writing song lyrics. Really. <laughs> That's to come up and like look over your shoulder and read it. It's like, ah, he's writing words. He's doing his job. Um, no, I was writing lyrics take, for, take for these songs. Um, and then I, I, I sent it in to, um, to the BBC, not really, you know, expecting anything. Mm. And um, they picked me up and made me Artist of the Month. Uh, and that was the, 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 the trigger, the event that, that made me um, quit my job and, and, and do it full time. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Much thanks to them. And so uh, you're not you've not been knocking the BBC introducing locally. So where's Oakham Fall in Leicestershire? Uh, sort of area for... Well, it's Rutland technically. Um, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I can. I, I mean, we don't have a. <laughs> we've got Rutland Radio, but we don't have like our own, you know, local BBC station. So mm. it's kind of up to me. I should probably pick. I don't know. Maybe Peterborough's got one. R but R I think Rutland Radio it used to be a North comedy Norfolk. series, didn't there? Was it? Oh no, that no, was Rutland Weekend Television or something. Really? Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a comedy series back in the day in the seventies and stuff like that. I can't. I'm not, I'm not sure. Oh, but, about like set in like a studio in Rutland. Yeah, yeah. well, sort of. Yeah, it was just a bit mad. Do you know? I think what, do you know it was esque I'm not sure if any of the Pythons yeah. were actually in it. Huh. Or, or, and it was definitely called Rutland Weekend Television. Right? I'd be interested to see that. Yeah, have a look. Have a, have a Google I, of but it. You know what I think about Rutland is it would make a great setting for a murder mystery. Because, like, a small, uh, like, rural, kind of idyllic, you know, it's quite nice. Um, lots of kind of close-knit communities. Um, farmers with guns. We've got a nice deep lake to, you know. Oh, sing, yeah, the sing, reservoir. Yeah, yeah exactly. Water. You know, yeah. You, you get the cops to, to, to dredge up a bug body or something, you know. Oh, it would just be great. It's like a Midsummer Murders type of, mm. type of thing. How, how, I mean, it's a long time since I've been to Oakham, I must admit. So, yeah. uh, 
Is, is it a fair sized place now? What's the population of Oakham just out of interest? Uh, I think it's about ten or eleven thousand people. Oh, it's just, just still small. Yeah, it's, just, it's place. a small place. Yeah, it's yeah. A, you know, I mean, you you recognise people mm. walking and driving around town. Um, it's still the county nice. seat, though, isn't it? Oakham of uh, county seat uh, of Rutland. Yeah, sort of thing. that's not saying much. I mean, Rutland's <laughs> the size of a postage stamp. So yeah, it's one of the smallest counties and yeah. stuff like that. And then you have got one of the largest man-made uh, reservoirs. Exactly. Just like most, most of the county is really. Is water. water. <laughs> They've got great fishing rights out there. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> And there's a little bit, isn't that called the bit that goes out into the water? Uh, Normanton Ham- Church. Hamilton Peninsula. Nice. Oh, you're thinking of Normanton, yeah, Normanton Church. That's amazing. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they, they, they drowned this whole village. They took the people out first. Mm. But to make the lake, they, they sank a couple of villages, dammed up the edge of a valley, and um, filled it with water. And then they rescued this church, and then they, I don't know how they did it. Because it's just, like, out there, mm. kind of, like, sticking out into the lake. Yeah. It's not on an island, it's near the land, but um, it's like raised up on rocks. It's, it's quite a thing to see. Yeah, but yeah, I wonder how they did it. No, you're not writing a song about uh, rotten water or water no, and stuff? No, like? I haven't. No, I wrote a song about, about Leamington, where I used to live, but I haven't got round to writing one about Rutland. Yeah, because it's quite a, I should, I should I should Sitting by the lake with a guitar in the summer yeah, could be quite inspirational. Yeah. Really. Oh, summer's over now, it's too cold. It is, yeah. I'll do it next year. Yeah, yeah. Right. A couple more numbers out off you, Frank, if you, if you want to, if you want to play a couple more numbers. Uh, I'll leave them totally up to you. So you I to? would like to do, um, I'll do one more. Um, okay. My, thro- my throat's a bit scratchy because I've okay, been Okay, well, one more take us to a good time, really, to be honest. Uh, um, we do appreciate you coming on. You've been here for quite a while. Hey, no worries, man. It's been fun. Um, just wondering kind of what is the best thing to finish with. Wouldn't it get some all going and clapping and cheering and dancing? Oh, clapping and cheering and dancing. Mm. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do... Um, I'll do two songs, but they're a medley. So it, oh, it's, wicked. It's like the oh, finish it off with a medley, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we like to hear. All right, this first one is uh, Fleetwood Mac. Oh, well. Well, I can't help about the shape I'm in I can't sing I ain't pretty and my legs are thin But don't ask me what I think of you I might not give the answer that you want me to Well, now when I talk to God, I'd know he'd understand. He said, stick by me and I'll be your guiding hand. But don't ask me what I think of you. I might not give the answer that you want me to. to dwell well it's down at the end of lonely street at heartbreak hotel where baby you know them be lonely you know you'll be lonely you'll be so lonely you could die although it's always crowded you still can find some room for broken hearted lovers to cry there in the gloom baby and you know they'll be lonely you know they'll be lonely They'll be so lonely they could die 
Well, the bellhop's tears keep flowing And the desk clerk's dressed in black Well, they've been so long on Lonely Street They'll never, never go back, baby And you know they'll be lonely You know they'll be lonely They'll be so lonely they could die Hey! So if your baby leaves you and you got a tale to tell Just take a walk down Lonely Street to Heartbreak Hotel Where baby, you know you'll be lonely You know you'll be lonely You'll be so lonely you could die Thank you and there, uh, catching him live down at Charters on uh, Sunday the 11th of December and uh, join us next week when we have a reggae band by the name of uh, Tolua. Brilliant set there, Pembroke. This Cheers, is uh, Pixies and uh, a song called Bella Spirit taken from the album Head Carrier. Hey, thanks, man. Went quick all of a sudden, didn't it? It's weird. Yeah. Uh,